Sometimes it may be only four pots, or it may be eight, or sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one hundred and eight. Sometimes even two hundred and fifty pots, or five hundred, or a thousand. On this particular occasion, for the Abbey Sheikh of Lord Goranga, nobody knows how many pots of water they were collected. There were hundreds and hundreds of pots, and all of the water was strained through fine cloth, and then it was mixed with special. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the scriptures tell us you should. Add uh, four parts sandalwood, three parts kumkum, two parts musk, and one part camphor. This is called chatu sana, and in this way the water becomes very fragrant. So the devotees arranged all of this for performing the abhishek of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There was one lady who became particularly enthusiastic to perform this service. Her name was Duki, and she was a maidservant in the home of Srivas Pandit. So this lady was working very hard, very enthusiastically, running backwards and forwards to the Ganga, bringing pots of water for the Abhishek of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw her and he was call, encouraging her. He would call her, bring, bring. He would encourage her, bring more, bring more. And then Lord Chaitanya changed her name. From Duki, he said, now from today on you should be known as Suki. So Duki means one who is unhappy, but Suki means one who is joyful. Lord Chaitanya not only changed her name to Suki, meaning joyful, but he also gave her spiritual bliss. He didn't just only change her name, he changed her whole heart so that she could experience the bliss of the service which she was performing. This is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So all of the devotees were very joyful performing the Abhishek for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They could understand the position of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he was the king of all kings. And he had come here in Navadweep to perform his wonderful pastimes. The devotees headed by Lord Nityananda and Advaita and then Srivas, they were all pouring water onto the head of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was relishing, he was enjoying their nice service. They offered all these different pots of fragrant water, performing his Abhishek, and at the same time chanting the Purusha Shukta for the pleasure of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After they had performed the Abhishek of the Lord, then they very carefully and respectfully dried the body of the Lord, and then they dressed him in new cloth, and covered his body also with sandalwood pulp. And then in this way they were glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, showing that they had the highest respect for him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after all of these different rituals had been done, then he told the devotees that, bring me some food, let me eat. And so the devotees, you know, here in Navadri, Bengal, they, were, they would bring what is grown locally. So they brought many, many bananas and coconuts and Lord Chaitanya was offered all of these things as well as sugar cane was brought and then different sweets, of course. 
in Bengal, a guest comes to the home, then it is customary, you have to bring sweets and feed them some nice sweets. So many Bengali sweets are there. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was brought all of these things. And he was eating, he was accepting all of their offerings. Many different people came and brought offerings for the Lord. And whatever they brought, the Lord very mercifully accepted their offerings. The Lord also placed his lotus feet and the devotees began to worship his lotus feet. Just as we decorate the feet of the Lord with sandalwood pulp and tulsi flowers. So on this occasion, the devotees also decorated the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with sandalwood pulp and then with lotus flowers. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was then revealing himself more to the devotees. And he began to tell them about different events which had taken place in the past. He wanted them to understand how he is actually the Supreme Lord. And as the Lord of everyone, he knows everything. He is omniscient. There's nothing he does not know. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to prove this to all of the devotees. And he began to tell them different events which had taken place in their life, which they were keeping secret, which they had not revealed to others. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, first of all, spoke to Srivas Pandit. After all, he was in the home of Srivas Pandit. Srivas was a very dear friend of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We know his home is not very far away from the yoga peeth. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Srivas, Do you remember that time you wanted to hear Srimad Bhagavatam? And you went to the place of Devananda Pandit. Devananda Pandit was having every day some discussions on Srimad Bhagavatam. Actually, he was lecturing on Srimad Bhagavatam to his students. Devananda Pandit had a small school and a number of young men were coming to him daily and hearing the scriptures from him. He was their teacher, like their guru. So Srivas Pandit was anxious to hear the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. So he decided that it would be very nice. Let me go to Shiva, let me go to Devananda Pandit's place. And there he is reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. I will be able to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm. Srimad Bhagavatam of course, is full of transcendental spiritual sound vibrations. Every word, Prabhupada tells us, every word in Srimad Bhagavatam is rich and has many, many meanings. And every line is full of so much ras. Srila hmm? Vyasadev begins nigama kalpa taror galetam palam shuka mukad amrita drava samyatam pibata bhagavatam rasmalayam mahuraho rashika bhuvi bhavukaha O learned and thoughtful men, relish this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the mature fruit of all the Vedic literatures. It has emanated from the mouth of Srila Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, it is all the more richer and it has been relished by even the liberated souls. So, Devan and Srivas Pandit went there to Devananda Pandit's place and he sat down in the midst of the other students hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. But 
When Devananda Pandit began to recite the Srimad Bhagavatam, then Srivas Pandit became affected. His love for Krishna awakened. The bhava which was within him was aroused. Srivas Pandit is a, a great devotee, an associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's not an ordinary person. He's one of the Panchatattvas. So simply by hearing the, the sound of the Srimad Bhagavatam, his ecstatic love for Krishna awakened within his body and he could not control his emotions. He began to roll on the floor and cry. And the other students who were there, they felt disturbed. They could not understand what was taking place. They were not trained in the nature of devotional service. We know that there are different stages in devotional service. There is sadhana bhakti and then bhava bhakti and finally prema bhakti. By practicing devotional service according to the different rules and regulations, the regulative principles, then one gradually comes to the stage of bhava where ecstatic love for Krishna is awakened. And that ecstatic love for Krishna is often displayed through different ecstatic symptoms manifest in the body. This happened to Srivas Pandit. These students were ignorant about the nature of devotional service. Although they had been studying Srimad Bhagavatam, they did not actually understand the real message of Srimad Bhagavatam because they had not been hearing it from someone who at that time was actually a devotee of Krishna. They had been hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from Devananda Pandit. And Devananda Pandit also was not familiar with the nature of devotional service. Therefore, when the students of Devananda Pandit brought the body of Srivas Pandit out of the classroom, Devananda Pandit did not stop them. The students were ignorant. The teacher was also ignorant. If the teacher is ignorant, then you cannot expect the students not to be ignorant. They are also ignorant. And the result was they committed offense against Srivas Pandit. They brought him out of that classroom and brought him away from their place and just left him laying on the ground. Srivas Pandit felt very unhappy to be treated in this way. He went to a solitary place and he sat down and on his own he began to read Srimad Bhagavatam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Srivas Pandit, he said, at that time I came from the spiritual world and I entered into your body. I sat in your heart and I read Srimad Bhagavatam to you. Hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, it was me, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Srivas Pandit, it was me who was reading the Srimad Bhagavatam to you. You were there with me, I was reading it to you from your heart. Srivas Pandit was astonished to know that the Lord understood everything which had happened to him and his experience. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then turned to another devotee and told him, he said, do you remember that time you had a fever? I came in the form of a doctor and it was myself who cured your fever. The devotee was shocked 
No one else knew that he'd had a fever. No one else knew of this incident that the doctor had come and cured him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told the devotee, I was that doctor. I came and I saved you from that fever. I cured you. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then turned to Gangadas, Gangadas Pandit. And he told Gangadas, do you remember that time you were running out of fear from the Yavna king and his soldiers? You were in fear that they were going to come and molest your family and throw you in jail. And out of fear, you were running. You came to the, bank, the banks of the Ganges. You wanted to cross the river and escape, but there was no boat. You were desperate. You were crying. There was no boat and it became night. You wondered what to do. You were considering maybe we should all just enter into the Ganga and give up our life. That will be better rather than being put into the hands of these Yavanas. But at that time, suddenly, from nowhere, a ferry appeared and the boatman invited you. In fact, you had requested the boatman that, my dear boatman, it is so, it's so appropriate that now you have come. I will be happy to pay you one coin to help us cross the river. In fact, I will give you two other coins as a donation if you will kindly take me and my family across the river. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was telling Ganga Das this incident. He told Ganga Das, he said, do you know I was that boatman? I came to save you from the hands of the Yavana king. Hearing all of this, Ganga Das was um, overwhelmed and he collapsed on the floor. He was so shocked. Nobody, he had never mentioned this incident to anyone previously. How could the Lord know of this? This is how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was revealing his glories to everyone that actually he is the Supreme Lord. It is he who is situated in the core of everyone's hearts as a super soul. And that same personality who appeared 5,000 years ago as Lord Krishna has come again in Navadweep as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then wanted to go on. He wanted to invite more devotees to come and take blessings from him. He told the devotees, there is one person who is not here. I want you to go and find him and bring him here. His name is Sridhar. Now, all of the devotees were surprised that who, who is this Sridhar? Who is this person? We never heard of this person before. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told them, you just go to the outskirts of the city. And there on the outskirts of the city, you just wait there. You will hear that person calling the holy names of the Lord. When you hear that person calling the holy names, you will know this is Sridhar. So, taking this instruction from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, some devotees went off to the outskirts of the town. And while they were only halfway to the outskirts of the town, they could already hear the loud calling of the holy names. They proceeded onwards and they came to that house to find in a very humble dwelling, there was one very humble soul who responded to the name Sridhar. Now, the life of Sridhar is very interesting and very important for us as followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to appreciate. Because 
from Sridhar we will learn something of the nature of a pure Vaishnava, a pure hearted soul who has surrendered completely to the lotus feet of the Lord. Now Sridhar used to maintain his life by selling different parts of bananas, banana trees. He would purchase one banana tree and then he would cut that banana tree into pieces and then sell it. He would sell banana leaves, he would sell the banana fruit and he would sell the banana stem. And in this way he was able to maintain his life. Sridhar would always spend 50% of his income for the worship of Mother Ganges. And he was, it said he was as truthful as Maharaj Yudhisthira. Usually when someone does business, they have the tendency to tell lies. You know, you're selling something you have to tell people, for you I am making no profit. But everyone knows if he's making no profit, how can he do business? But Sridhar was not that kind of businessman. He was very, very truthful. He never spoke any lie. And those persons who knew the nature of Sridhar, then whatever price he quoted, they would pay that price. Because they knew that this is a fair price, that Sridhar is not somebody to cheat me. However, when Lord Chaitanya would come there as a young boy during his scholarly pastimes, he would enjoy playing tricks on Sridhar. And he would always argue with Sridhar about the price. Whatever price Sridhar would quote, then, Shridhar, th then, then the Lord would argue that this is too much. And the Lord would only want to pay half of the price Sridhar had asked. Sridhar would become very exasperated, so difficult to deal with this young boy, He's so arrogant. Nimai would joke. Nimai would joke with Sridhar and tell him that, I know you spend 50% of your income in the worship of Mother Ganges. Why are you worried about giving me a discount? You spend so much money to worship Mother Ganges. What's the harm if you give me some discount? And then in his arrogance, Nimai would say to him, don't you know I am the father of the Ganges? Hearing all of this arrogance from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sridhar would cover his ears and chant the names of Vishnu. Sometimes he would tell Lord Chaitanya, say, why don't you just go to some other shop and purchase the goods from some other place? Why do you have to come to me to get your banana leaves? But Lord Chaitanya would say, no, no, I'm, I've got my supplier. Why I should go some other place? He would not accept to give up this relationship with Sridhar. Sridhar would often uh, tell Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that, or, or rather Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would, would sometimes tease Sridhar by saying, that I know you are a rich man. You cannot fool me. Although Sridhar was living in a very simple way, very frugal, broken, his home was broken, his cloth was very old, he had nothing of any value, he was very poor. But Lord Chaitanya would joke with him that I know you have a small fortune, I know you have a fortune, you're not spending it. You're, you cannot fool me. Lord Chaitanya liked to play this kind of trick with Sridhar. He was enjoying so much. Sometimes he would take the goods 
And then Srira would snatch them back and say, no, no, your price is not fair. You have to give me my proper price. But Lord Chaitanya would again grab and pull everything back. No, come on, you have to give me. You're, you're a cheater. You're, you're, you cannot cheat me. I'm a brahmana. You cannot do this to me. You have to give me these goods. In this way, they would pull back and forth. Finally, Sridhar would say, all right, just take whatever you want. Just go, just leave me. Just take. I'll give you free. Just let me have some peace. But whatever happened, Sridhar would never get angry. He would always be able, he would always control himself. He never became mad and rage, although his goods were being taken away from him at an unfair price. He always would look at the face of Lord Chaitanya and he would be conquered by the face of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just seeing that beautiful face of Lord Chaitanya, seeing his beautiful form, then Sridhar would give in and say, all right, then take what you want. Just go, just leave me. So this was the relationship between Lord Chaitanya and Sridhar. When Lord Chaitanya had sat on the throne, then he was calling Sridhar to come. The devotees went there and they told them that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is calling him. He wants him to come. Sridhar, just by hearing the name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he became unconscious. He fell down. The devotees had to revive him and bring him to the home of Srivas Pandit. When Lord Chaitanya saw Shriva, Sridhar, then Lord Chaitanya was encouraging him, telling him that, Sridhar, now you have come. You can take some benediction from me. But Sridhar did not want any benediction. He said, no, why I have to take some benediction from you? What is the need to take some benediction from you? But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu insisted that no, you, you must take something. You have to take something from me. Before I have taken so many of your banana leaves, I have enjoyed my prasadam on your banana leaves. Now I want to give you something in return. Ask something from me. So then Sridhar said, all right, then bless me that that Brahmana who would come and take, by, take my banana leaves and argue with me that I want that I can worship his feet birth after birth. I want that I will always remember his divine form coming to my place. Give me that benediction. And the Lord was hum the Lord was overwhelmed hearing the hum humility of Sridhar. He told Sridhar, let me give you the eight mystic perfections. Let me give you the, all of these eight perfections. You can then you can do whatever you want. But Sridhar said well, if you give me these things, I'll simply become proud. If you give me, the Lord said, I will give you a kingdom. But Sridhar said, yeah, a kingdom? That will be like poison for me. Just to have wealth, I will become hard-hearted and proud. That is not good for me. Just bless me that life after life I can chant the holy names of the Lord. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested Sridhar to offer prayers to him. But Sridhar said, how can I offer prayers to you? I am an uneducated person. I am illiterate. I am not able to compose prayers to you. But by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Mother Saraswati manifested on the tongue of Sridhar. And Sridhar began to speak some words of prayer, glorifying Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In his prayers, Sridhar described how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears in, 
so many different forms in this material world that everything that we see in this world is but the energy of the Lord and it is all under his control. Sridhar went on to describe that the Lord appeared to give devotional service to everyone. That in his past incarnations, when the Lord came as Lord Krishna, he had kept devotional service secret for only a few people. Because the Lord knows that when he gives devotional service, he becomes conquered by that devotee. Sridhar spoke how Bhishma conquered Krishna by his pure love. Grandfather Bhishma was fighting in the battle of Kurukshetra. And on one particular occasion, Grandfather Vidma, Bhishma had vowed that this day either I will kill one of the Pandavas or Krishna will have to break his promise. So when Arjuna was in difficulty, Bhishma was coming forward to kill Arjuna. And at that time, Lord Krishna picked up the chariot wheel and came rushing towards Grandfather Bhishma. Bhishma, seeing Krishna willing to fight, he knew that Krishna had broke his promise. So Bhishma was happy. Bhishma felt he had been successful. He had forced Krishna to break his promise. How did Krishna, why did Krishna break his promise? Because he was conquered by the love of Bhishma. Bhishma, in his rasa of chivalry, fighting with the Lord, had conquered Krishna. And similarly, Mother Yashoda, she also conquered Krishna by her pure love. Mother Yashoda was chasing after Krishna in the courtyard after Krishna stole the butter. And Mother Yashoda was able to capture Krishna. Although Krishna cannot be approached even by great yogis who can move at the speed of the mind, Mother Yashoda could capture Krishna. Not only could she capture Krishna, but she could tie him up because of her pure love. And similarly also Arjuna can give orders to Krishna. In the battle of Kurukshetra, in Bhagavad Gita, we hear Arjuna telling Krishna, bring my chariot into the midst of the battlefield. I want to see everyone who is assembled here. Krishna became the servant of his devotees. Sridhar was describing all of this before all of the devotees in the home of Srivas Pandit. Sridhar said, in the past, only a few people knew the glory of devotional service. Only a few rare souls understood the value of pure devotion to your lotus feet. But now, in this Kali Yuga, you have come in your most merciful form and you are going to distribute this love, this bhakti, you're going to give this opportunity to everyone. Hearing the words of Sridhar, all of the devotees assembled in the home of Srivas Pandit were astonished. The, the Sridhar, Kolavekcha Sridhar, who was known to be illiterate, was speaking words of the highest philosophy. He was revealing such words of wisdom which they had very rarely heard before. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very pleased with Sridhar for offering these nice prayers and he blessed him. He said, I give you the benediction that you will have devotional service which is confidential even to the Vedas. The Vedic literature does not easily reveal devotional service. So that, that devotion which was given to Sridhar, this was not easily 
taken from the Vedic literature, but it was given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sridhar. This deliverance of, or rather, this benediction given to Sridhar is very important for all of us to understand. It is said that simply by hearing about how Sridhar was benedicted by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we also become blessed with pure devotion. However, we have to also understand the significance of this pastime. Because Sridhar represents a person who was without any wealth. He was without any followers. And he was without any education. Generally, when we look at someone, we look at them by material values. We see someone as being wealthy and we see some other person as pover being poverty stricken. Just like people thought Sridhar is poverty stricken. He would stay awake the whole night chanting the holy name. The neighbors of Sridhar they all thought that he is staying awake all night because he's so hungry he cannot sleep. And they thought his chanting are due to pains in his belly due to his hunger. So they cannot, ordinary people, even so-called brahmanas, they cannot understand the exalted position of a Vaishnava devotee like Kolaveka Sridhar. Just like Rupa Goswami writes in the Nectar of Instruction that a person in knowledge will bathe in the Ganges River without considering the bubbles and the foam and mud which are floating in the Ganga. In the same way, a person will not recognize a Vaishnava or we will not judge a person just simply by his body being wealthy or diseased or uneducated. We cannot judge a Vaishnava by any of these qualities. These are material qualities. Materialistic people look at the lives of devotees and sometimes they think, oh, these poor people, they're suffering so much difficulty, so much hardship in their life. Materialistic people do not understand that the, the distresses which one undergoes in material life are the cause of spiritual happiness. Do you want that kind of happiness? The distress which we undergo in our material life is actually the cause of spiritual happiness. How do you, uh, uh, it is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Prabhupada also remembers how it meant a lot to him because Srila Prabhupada had been doing business and he was thinking, I will give money to my spiritual master. But then it was arranged that his business would fail. Krishna took away all of his business. And when he lost all of his money, then the family members no longer respected him. And when the family members no longer respected him, then the person suffered distresses more and more in the material life. But these distresses were an impetus to take up spiritual life. Yashyaham anugranami harishyai tattanam shanai. Lord Krishna says, 
to Uddhava, when I am especially merciful to someone, then I take away all of their wealth. So here you have the example of Sridhar, Kolaveka Sridhar. He had no wealth. He was not born in a very good family. He had no education. He did not have followers. But he was a great devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He had great love for the Lord. His life was meant for giving service to the Lord, not for material pleasures. Looking at the life of such a person, we materialistic people think, oh, he's so unfortunate. Oh, he's suffering so much. Just like people may think about Raghunath Das Goswami. Now, Raghunath Das was also born in a very, very, very wealthy family. And he gave up everything to go to Jagannath Puri. And in Jagannath Puri, for some time, he was begging food at the gates of the temple. And then later, he stopped even begging and he was simply taking food from the drain. In this way, somehow he was living. So, when we look at the life of such devotees, we may think, oh, why he is suffering so much hardship? Oh, he is undergoing so much difficulty. But Raghunath never thought like that. For Raghunath, it was all pleasure. This is the wealth of a devotee that they can keep their vows, they can keep the principles of living simply, sacrificing everything for the pleasure of the Lord. Just like we said, Sridhar would give 50% every day, whatever was his income, 50% would be spent for the worship of Mother Ganga. And in this way, he was happy. Rupa and Sanatana Goswami were also very wealthy people. It is said, when Rupa Goswami retired, he had so much wealth, it could fill a boat. He had so much wealth. He gave it all up and he went to Vrindavan. Rupa and Sanatana, two brothers, they were living there in Vrindavan. And they were sleeping under a different tree every night. So materialistic people may think, oh, why so much, <coughs> so much difficulty, so much hardship. But for Rupa and Sanatan, it was no hardship. Rather, it was all pleasure. When a devotee is engaged in devotional service, then the devotee is not thinking about hardship. He's not thinking about pains or difficulties. The pleasure for the devotee is in service. We see so many devotees today, how they are going out, working hard in the service of Krishna. We see the wonderful example his Holiness Jaipataka Swami, although materially he looks to be in difficulty, an un very uncomfortable health situation, but what gives him the greatest pleasure is his service to Srila Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya's mission. Srila Jaipataka Maharaj is not thinking about the hardships which he undergoes. He's feeling bliss in the service of Krishna. And the more we also engage in the service of Krishna, the more we also feel transcendental bliss. It is the nature of the soul to be blissful. 
But if we are on the bodily platform, if our mind is only full of material desires, then we will not feel any bliss. Therefore, Queen Kunti also says the same thing. Janma Aishwarya Shruta Shribiya Edamana Madapunam Naivarhati Avidatum Vai Twamma Kinchana Gochara Those who are on the path of material progress, if they're simply interested in those four things, birth in the good family, material opulence, bodily beauty, and mundane education. And if we're on, our only concern is to increase these four things, then we will not have that opportunity to actually know the Lord. We, the Lord cannot be known by such people who are simply absorbed in these kind of things. If we want to actually come close to Krishna, then we have to give up our attachment to the material. And particularly, when we look at devotees, when we look at the Vaishnavas, we cannot understand the Vaishnavas by our material senses. And we must be very careful, therefore, of committing offenses against the Vaishnavas. If we commit offenses against the Vaishnavas, then we will never achieve the goal of life. It does not matter if we take bath millions of times in the Ganga. It does not matter how many holy names we chant. But if we offend the Vaishnavas, if we offend the devotees of the Lord, then we can never expect to get love for Krishna we will never achieve the goal of life. Offenses against the devotees, very serious. So from the life of Sridhar, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching all of us to be very careful how to recognize a Vaishnava. We know in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it was written there, the devotees came from Kuliya, and one of the householders, they came, he came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he asked the Lord, I am, he said, I am a householder fallen in material life. How can I make progress in spiritual life? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested him, you have to chant the holy name and serve the Vaishnavas. So then that person requested Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how can I recognize a Vaishnava? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, replied, first he said, anyone who chants the holy name even once, he is considered to be a Vaishnava. So here we have the example of Kolaveka Sridhar. He was not just sim simply chanting the holy name once. He was constantly chanting the holy name. Day and night, he did not stop. He did not even sleep at night. He was so much absorbed in chanting the holy name. But because he had no money, because he was poor, because he was uneducated and no followers, then some people looked down on him. They condemned him. And they thought, why he's wasting so much time? Why doesn't he do something useful? Just like often when we go for Harinam Sankirtan in the streets of some city, then people will come and they will complain. Why don't you do something useful with your life? Of course, if we were to ask them, my dear sir, what are you doing with your life? And then they will explain what they're doing, how they're running some business, distributing meat, fish and eggs, or selling steel, or doing some other, some mundane things, 
they cannot understand that all of their work is useless labor. They are simply acting under the modes of nature. But the devotees who are engaged in the Sankirtan movement, they are actually performing the highest welfare work. Because through the Sankirtan movement, they're distributing this holy name of Krishna. They're giving everyone the opportunity to awaken their dormant love for Krishna. So Sridhar, as a humble soul, he did not ever claim any honor for himself. He did not want anything, even though he was offered everything. He just simply wanted to continue as he was doing in his service for Krishna. Just like the gopis of Braja, Lord Krishna told the gopis that there's no way I can ever repay you for what you're doing for me. You have to be satisfied yourself with that service. The gopis, of course, were engaged in remembering Krishna all of the different pastimes of Krishna and reenacting all the pastimes which had taken place with Krishna. They were remembering all of his different characteristics and qualities. So Lord Krishna sent the message to them that you have to be satisfied yourself with these activities. And Sridhar is an example like this. He was satisfied. He was fully satisfied by simply doing his service for the Lord. What was his service? Just simply providing banana leaves for the Lord to eat his rice from. This is a wonderful service. And one service, you, it's not that you have to do something big or be some great person to be recognized by Krishna. Krishna sees everyone equally. He sees the person on the altar offering arti and he sees also the devotee cleaning the temple floor. Krishna, he does not make any distinction that one service is higher than another. He sees all the devotees equally. He sees their mood of devotion in offering their service to him. Just like in chanting the holy name. The chanting of the holy name is not just some professional musical performance, but it's, a, it's an offering to the Lord from the heart, the calling of the Lord's name with love from the heart to appeal to the Lord and also to attract the other, the other souls in the material world, to give them also an opportunity to hear the holy name of the Lord. So the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu help all of us to understand more what should be our mood in executing our service to Krishna. We do not know how to be a devotee, but we learn from hearing about the lives of great devotees, the lives of such devotees as Srivas Pandit or Kolaveka Sridhar, how they gave everything for the service of Krishna and how they were fully satisfied in transcendental bliss. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then turned to Morari Gupta. And Morari Gupta, of course, had been observing the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from a young child. He had watched Nimai Pandit grow up and now he was seeing Nimai Pandit transformed into the devotee but not just only a devotee, he was seeing that Nimai was actually the Lord himself who had come to establish the Yuga Dharma. So earlier, 
Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had requested Morari Gupta to give up the worship of Lord Ramachandra. Actually, Morari Gupta was a great devotee of Lord Rama. When we go on Parikrama, on the final day, we will also visit the home there, the place where Morari Gupta used to live. A small temple has been constructed there, and the deities there are of Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman. They're not, they're not Morari Gupta's original deities, but they have been placed there because Morari Gupta was known to be a great devotee of Lord Ramachandra. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had requested Morari Gupta to give up the worship of Lord Ramachandra and just worship Radha and Krishna. So that night, Morari Gupta went home. But the next morning, he returned to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he told Lord Chaitanya, he said, I will have to give up my life. You have asked me to worship Lord Krishna and I cannot give up the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra. Therefore, I cannot follow your order. Therefore, I better give up my life. But Lord Chaitanya encouraged Murari Gupta and told him, no, it's all right. You don't need to give up the worship of Lord Ramachandra, because you have a very special connection with Lord Ramachandra. Actually, you are Hanuman. So on this particular occasion of this uh, Mahaprakash, Lord Chaitanya told Murari Gupta to come forward. And when Murari Gupta came forward, at that time, Lord Chaitanya transformed himself into Lord Ramachandra. He was no longer Nimai Pandit with the golden skin, but rather his skin had become a dark green color, just like the color of fresh grass, just like the color, turquoise color, like the color in which Lord Ramachandra appeared. And not only was Lord Ramachandra there now, but also Mother Sita was by his side. And Lakshman, his brother, was also there. And there were many monkeys also there. And the monkeys were all offering prayers. Morari Gupta saw that he was also there as a monkey, offering prayers to Lord Ramachandra. Lord, Lord Chaitanya revealed all of this to Morari Gupta. He knew the heart of Marari Gupta, that Marari Gupta had sold his heart to the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra. And he was showing that he is non different from Lord Ramachandra. Just as he did with Sridhar. When Sridhar came to worship Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Chaitanya also revealed to Sridhar that he was actually Lord Krishna. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared before Sridhar holding a flute, standing in a threefold bending form, and by his side was Lord Balaram. And Ananta was, was was like an umbrella over the head of Lord Krishna. In this way, Lord Chaitanya was showing to Sridhar that he was actually Lord Krishna. And when he had said that he was the father of the Ganga, he was proving it to Sridhar. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not only Krishna and Rama, that all of the different incarnations of the Lord, they are all there within Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is non-different from Lord Krishna. He is not just avatar, he is avatari. He is the origin of all the avatars. And during this time of Mahaprakash, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took this opportunity to reveal all of these things to his different devotees. And in this way, all of his devotees could understand 
the omniscience of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Seeing how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord, then they will have no more doubt in serving him. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we said, revealed himself as Lord Ramachandra to Marari Gupta. And then he also explained to Marari Gupta that your name, he said, is very nice. Gupta means hidden. He said, Marari, the Supreme Lord Marari is hidden in your heart. I know you are hiding the Lord in your heart. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed the hidden meaning of his name to Murari Gupta. Then the Lord called for Advaita Acharya to come forward. Now Advaita had been a regular uh, preacher of the message of Bhagavad Gita. And he would like to explain each and every verse of the Bhagavad Gita to support the mood of devotion to the Lord. But sometimes Advaita would come across a verse in Bhagavad Gita where he would have some difficulty to do this. And when he could not do it, at that time he would fast. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when, he, when Advaita came forward, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Advaita, do you remember that time you were fasting? I came in your dream and I gave you the real meaning to that verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, he said, when you fast, I also fast. The Lord can only eat through the offering of his devotees. The Lord will never eat the offering of non-devotees. We know Duryodhan invited Krishna to come. A big feast was prepared with all nice foods, best ghee and everything. But Krishna said, no, no, I'm not hungry today. But when, when Vidura invited the Lord to come, and it was only not even bananas, but banana skins. Then the Lord ate them with relish. Because Vidura was the devotee. So it is said, Patram pushpam balam toyam yome bhaktya prayachati. The Lord is not eager for our offerings, but he wants our devotion. So Advaita Acharya would regularly offer food for the pleasure of the Lord. But if he could not understand some verse from the Bhagavad Gita, then he would fast. The whole night he would fast. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I came in your dream and I explained the verse to you. It was, I told you, now, now wake up, now go and cook and, and break your fast. I want to eat. This was the, the Lord dealing with his devotee. Advaita was amazed. Nobody else knew of these dealings. Only the Supreme Lord himself knew of these things. Advaita Acharya had never spoke of them to anyone. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed that he knew all of this. And he was revealing himself as the Supreme Lord before all of the devotees. In this way all of the devotees could continue to serve the Lord with 100% full faith in his lotus feet. No more doubts. So we want all of the devotees to have this kind of faith that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord and he has come in the Kali Yuga to teach all of us how to surrender to Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki. Yeah.